a team consisting of scientists arrive at a cave in Costa Rica. This man named Michael is their leader. He goes to the entrance of the cave and cuts himself and holds out the injury. A grow of bats are drawn to his blood and forcefully fly out causing the rest of the men to take refuge in their chopper. We see him as a young child 25 years earlier living in Greece under a doctor's care because of his blood disease. Just then, another young boy who also suffers from a blood disease is admitted. Michael names him Milo. As the boys chat, the machine stationed to sustain Milo begins to malfunction. This causes him to faint. But Michael uses a pen to fix the machine's fault and Milo is back again. Later on, Milo is bullied by other kids because of his disease. We are back in the present. In Sweden, Michael rejects a Nobel Peace Prize and returns to work. A young care girl, Anna is under his care and treatment as she suffers the same blood disease. His girlfriend, Dr. Martin works with him but she believes he is pushing himself too hard trying to find a cure for the blood disease. Michael believes mixing human blood with the DNA of bat will produce a cure for this disease. He goes ahead to test this cure on a rat which appears to be a failure. Soon, Anna begins to have complications that can end her life but Michael is able to help save the day as he always does. At this moment, Martine eyes fall on the lab rat that was presumed to be dead. It didn't die. This means Michael's project is a success. Michael goes to visit Milo and Dr. Nicholas to appeal for more funding to further his experiments. Milo has lived under Nicholas's since his childhood and Michael and Milo have become like brothers. He makes them see the urgency in his request. Morbius takes Martine and other individuals with him onto a boat for the following phase of his experiment, where Martine will inject the serum into him. After the process, an unfriendly crew member interrupts them. Just then, they noticed Morbius was no longer on his chair. He had broken loose and was nowhere to be found. They find him on the ceiling and Morbius assaults the man, killing him. More men come into the scene, and Morbius, presently having transformed into a vampiric beast, goes after every one of them and takes in every bit of their blood. Martine is knocked down in the attack, and after Michael comes back to himself, he watches himself going after the men on surveillance cameras. Morbius calls in the Mayday response and Simon Stroud and Al Rodriguez who are FBI agents come to the crime scene for investigation purposes. Martine is seen alive while Morbius has escaped after the call. Milo and Nicholas find out about the occurrence. Morbius stays in his lab away from the rest of the world to keep understanding his new state while drinking blood samples to satisfy his newfound hunger. He starts to sharpen his new bat-like powers, super speed, flying, whipper reflexes, super speed, and strength. And the bats in his lab now answer him as their chief. Later, Milo finds him as he backslides into his bad state and assists him with some blood samples. Understanding that the serum has helped fix the disease, knowing the consequence of this, Morbius refuses. Later on, a nurse in the hospital is killed by what is speculated to be a vampire monster, yet Morbius is innocent of this. Agent Rodriguez and Stroud come to question and are bent on apprehending him. He makes an attempt to escape but he is apprehended and detained. Rodriguez and Stroud question Morbius in his cell before Milo visits. After Milo abandons his stick, Morbius understands that Milo took the serum for himself and is consequently the person who had the nurse killed. Morbius enters vampire mode and escapes from the prison, then looks as Milo turns into a vampire and kills a man at a newspaper kiosk. Subsequent to being found, Milo attempts to persuade Morbius to go along with him as they can surrender and go with their newly discovered powers and inclinations. He pursues Milo into a subway, where the two of them fight before others. Police comes to capture Milo, yet he kills them all. Milo does his best to get Morbius to no avail. Morbius escapes. After Martine leaves the hospital, is let out of the clinic, Morbius reaches her explains everything to her. 
He finds a lab by a dangerous group, frightens them off and takes over the lab. His intention is to keep working to develop another compound to fix his vampirism, even if death is the consequence. In a nightclub, Milo has a conflict with an aggressive man, whom he later follows down a rear entryway and kills him and his friends. He later sees Morbius and his girlfriend kiss while working. After Rodriguez and Stroud find the dead men, they watch what the surveillance camera captured when they see Milo's face. Subsequent to seeing this on the news, Nicholas goes to visit Milo and question him, but Milo would hear nothing of what he was saying. He believes Morbius has always been Nicholas's favorite son. He goes further to attack Nicholas and leaves him seriously injured. Morbius meets with Martine once again. Just then, he is made aware of what occurred with Nicholas. He goes to be present with Nicholas as he passes on. He is subsequently called by Milo, who has abducted Martine. Morbius contacts her only to find out that she is really in harm's way by Milo. She allows him to take her blood to pursue Milo, but his very own little drop of blood falls into her mouth. Morbius turns out to be all the more powerful as he goes to confront Milo. He gathers his bats and uses them to encompass Milo, allowing him an opportunity to move toward him and infuse him with the compound. As Milo does, he remembers it was Morbius who gave him his name. Morbius is there by his side as he eventually dies. Morbius takes off, while Martine seems to wake as a vampire.